Hi guys. Oh my gosh. Do you ever sometimes just look around your house and you are like, what is that smell? Well, it happens to me <laughs> every so often. And in today's video, I just want to be tackling a few of those neglected stinky areas that if not cleaned deeply over some time, just start really just, just, you know, just going all funky and stuff. And this is just, you know, hints and, and, and tips in case you think your home might need this kind of deep clean. Stay tuned because I cannot wait to share this with you. I'm so happy that you are here. Let's do this. So when my day starts, there's something that I just have to do before I get onto the deep cleaning. You know, things like we have to water our garden. If you watch a previous video about the state of our garden, then you will understand. And then, you know, tidy the living room, spend some time with the kids, reading. Um, we've already had breakfast at this point in time. So that's what I like to do before I really start with the deep cleaning. And our kids are homeschooled, so this is just a few of the minutes that we spend together before they go to class. Of course, I will do a lot of laundry as well. Because, you know, laundry has got to be done every day. So the question that I know some people will ask is, okay, so when you're doing all this, what is your help doing? Like now, if you saw when I was watering the garden, there's like a bunch of pairs of shoes that she's already cleaned and hung them out to dry out there. She's already done the main cleaning of the house, which is the mopping of the floor, the preparing of breakfast for the kids and all that in case I'm not awake by that time. So she actually does quite a lot. She does the main regular general cleaning, but when I want something like some deep cleaning that done in the, around the house, then that's when I will step in. Or even when we need to wash clothes, she'll do the hand washing and I'll do the machine washing. We just work together, guys. Teamwork makes the dream work, you know? And speaking of laundry, by the way, what I had here in the washer were towels. And if you want your towels to smell fresh, not to have that funky smell, I like to put vinegar. When, the, when you're doing the fast, the final rinse cycle, so that by the time they're done, the vinegar kills any odor. And it's really nice because your towels smell so good. And then they become so soft, especially when you air dry them. So yeah, you're already tackling order as it is. I sent her help to go to the market to top up on fruits and vegetables and so she didn't get a chance to clear the table after breakfast so that's what I'm doing and by the way one thing that we've started doing actually within these last few days is to teach our children how to <laughs> how to wipe the table after we've had meals and to sweep the floor and to put away the table mats. they already set the table but I hadn't yet taught them how to clean the table and I think it is so important for kids to take responsibility where they live. It's actually really good for their self-esteem. Now, of course, you can see one reason why uh, we need to tackle order is we need to we need get to wipe so many dirty things from our surfaces. And it just helps to tackle any sort of order, especially if you do a deep clean and disinfecting once once a week or once every two weeks. Okay, it's fruits time. Yes. So as I um, prepare these fruits, I want to just highlight a few of the areas that are found to be really problematic around the home when it comes to smell. And that is the dustbin, the cleaning cloths, the chopping boards, the counters, the sink, and the fridge. These are some areas that we have got to take some time and deep clean every once every two weeks and or once a week. Oh my gosh. 
because they will really just start, start releasing orders and you won't even notice until there's some huge amalgamation of smell around your house and you will never know where they're coming from but it turns out they're just coming from different areas of your kitchen and your home so we have got to tackle these areas today By the case, if you're interested on where to buy laundry pods, you guys know how much I love cleaning with laundry pods. Um, we use Tide pods and we also use Ariel or Parcel. And we also have the scent posters that a lot of you guys have been asking me about. And also the carpet cleaners. I will put all those links down below so please check them out. And of course some amazingly pure raw organic shea butter and all that jazz. Check it out down below and in the pinned comment. After cleaning the lunchtime dishes, let us start with these uh, smelly areas, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So the first thing will be the chopping boards. Now, if you have a wooden chopping board and you have got to take time to clean it, by this some guys did, um, they did some research and found that some of the stinkiest areas in our home, you'd think would be the toilet, but uh-uh, more than 75% of dishcloths and rags were found to have salmonella, E. coli, and fecal matter, you guys. Fecal matter in your kitchen. Even on the, the what do you call them? The chopping boards and the counters. So we really have to get those things disinfected. So again, I was talking about the wooden chopping board. You can't clean it the same way you would clean a plastic one. So for the wooden one, what you need to do is to mix one tablespoon of bicarbonate of soda, one tablespoon of salt, and two tablespoons of white vinegar. Now you need to scrub your chopping board with this paste and then rinse thoroughly with hot boiling water and leave it to dry. So the vinegar disinfects the salmonella and the E. coli. You're welcome.
Now let's talk about the plastic chopping board. For this one, you need to mix four tablespoons of baking soda and one tablespoon of dish detergent and two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. Mix them together and make a nice paste. Now what I did here is I put a masking tape straight halfway down my chopping board and applied the paste on one side so that we can see the difference. Now you need to leave this to stand for several hours. So if you want to see how clean and amazing it got, you gotta stay tuned until the end of the video because you will not believe it. Now the reason why we use hydrogen peroxide for the plastic chopping board is because it is not corrosive. However, if you find that the hydrogen peroxide is not working, then you can soak your plastic chopping board in bleach. Hear me out, diluted bleach. Soak it for several hours and then once you have rinsed it out, uh it will be clean and again we'll be getting rid of all those nasties Ugh, salmonella my goodness stay tuned for the end of how just to show you how amazing this this chopping board is going to look now let's talk about cleaning cloth if there is one thing you guys i cannot stand it is a stinky cleaning cloth and then sometimes it gets stinky and then it gets slimy and then oh my gosh it is disgusting and you have had it even has e coli and salmonella and fecal matter my gosh you guys we have got to clean these cleaning rugs so i do it two ways sometimes i'll just put hot water on the stove to start boiling and then i put some soap some of the liquid detergent that we we make here is fine and then i'll put my cleaning cloth there and i will boil the life out of them for about 30 minutes to kill all those things but another way you can do it is you can put hot water in a basin hot boiling water and then you are going to put bleach in it and then you are going to soak your cleaning cloth there for about 30 minutes and oh my gosh your cleaning cloth will thank you hello if you are new here welcome we make our own bleach we make our own cleaning detergent we make our own hand wash and all that jazz if you're interested i will link a playlist right up here so that's the kind of bleach that we're using here just in case you're wondering that's why treat and bleach in all that uh you do the manner yes you do the is french The kitchen drain you guys can get so stinky and i think i've shared this before one of the best ways to do this is just pour a uh, baking soda down your drain after you have shined your sink of course you all know we shine our sink here and then pour baking soda and then pour vinegar over it and then let this mix just stand for like 30 minutes all right which is what i've already done and now um after 30 minutes pour down boiling water and anything that could have been clogging your pipes and making them stink will have dis dissolved by now and just disappeared. If you have essential oils, you can pour a few drops down the drain and it's gonna be clean and smelling like hello, yes, flowers and all that jazz. Um, I'll put a link down below for where you can get amazing essential oils. 
so you guys know we make our own cleaning uh kitchen cleaner here for cleaning the counters however in the interest of disinfecting and killing all those disgusting germs once a week or once every two weeks maximum or latest it is important to make a disinfecting solution and just clean all those areas once again so that's what i want to do so to make this disinfecting solution i will just mix one part water to a quarter part bleach again the homemade bleach and that's it so we are making a disinfecting solution a chlorine disinfecting solution this thing was very popular by the way when covid started so what i do with it is i'm going to spray the kitchen counters the doorknobs the tabs you know all those places of high contact just to make sure i kill everything that needs to be killed there and then uh for the rest of the week we'll be using our normal kitchen counter cleaner kitchen counter cleaner yes that's a word yes <laughs> so we are disinfecting the services services the surfaces speaking of stench like what kind of experiments do you have going on in your fridge that have been there for like three weeks four weeks and growing mold and growing legs and starting a whole colony oh you don't have oh okay so i'm the only one well <laughs> This is one of the things that you guys just start stinking up your house and you have no idea. And when I say you, I mean me. Sometimes, you guys, I will just have things that are rotting in my fridge. <laughs> yes, I'm hanging my head in shame. Or just things that you have bought and you've put in your pantry and all that and they're just rotting. So I think it's so important to once in a while, once a week, latest, go through your fridge and find out what is thinking and get rid of it. And while you're at it, spray it down, disinfect, disinfect it because it is also an area of high contact. And yeah, your family and your gut will thank you. The carpet, you guys, is, a, is another area where you just accumulate orders. I mean, all those bodies rolling around the carpet and kids and accidents, pouring water, pouring milk, pouring water. Ugh. Sometimes it can just get disgusting. So, it is important to pour some baking soda mixed with essential oils if you have them. And then leave, leave them to sit for about 15 minutes. Leave the whole baking soda mixture to sit on your carpet for about 15 minutes to soak up the good thing with baking soda or bicarbonate of soda is that it soaks up all the terrible odor and then you come and vacuum away and you a carpet you smell like christmas morning nobody likes a musty carpet smell mm -mm -mm. nobody <laughs>
smelling of stench. Yes. Is there anything stinkier than a garbage bin, you guys? <laughs> I am here to find one. So, anywho, well, the thing is, on a normal day, on a normal week, when life is going on normally, we just remove the garbage, the garbage bag from the garbage bin, and then maybe you know swirl some water and just toss. You know, just basic, barest minimum cleaning of the garbage can, and that's why sometimes it just smells like death. Okay. So, I think it is one of those things that you should take time every once in a while to just really scrub your dustbin within an inch of its life. Again, just scrub it. You all know we're using our homemade liquid detergent here and just scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it, scrub it really nicely. And then, you guys, <laughs> I know you're going to ask me why I'm washing this uh, paper, paper dustbin paper. It is because... Uh, <laughs> we bought this dustbin at game. You remember the game that was at d- 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 what's that place on on Thika Road? Garden City. Yes, is it still there? I don't know. So we really needed a dustbin, so we went and bought it. But it didn't have a lid. And you guys, ah, there's nothing stinkier than a garbage can that doesn't have a lid. You guys and the flies. So we realized we had this really thick and heavy garbage bag. So that is our garbage bin cover, all right? So we just drape it, or you'll see when I'm done. So anyway, I need to wash it because it needs to be clean. So yeah, and then one also thing that I do is when I've finished cleaning the garbage bin and dried it, I spray it with our toilet cleaner. You know the method one or the one we make at home? By the way, I'll show you guys one of these days. So I just spray it because it smells amazing. It has essential oils and vinegar and all that. Spray it down and wipe it and manze that garbage bin now smells like no not christmas christmas eve <laughs> it smells really nice It's such a serious storm underway. Thank God for rain, no, sh- no watering in the evening. So, yeah, yeah. I think it would be remiss of me to do an order and a smelly house video without mentioning the swish and swipe of our toilets because you all know how important it is to swish and swipe by the way if you're hearing things that you've never heard here before it is because we follow the fly lady system in january i did a whole 21 baby steps with the fly lady system please check it out i talked very clearly about the swish and swipe which is a way that you clean your to- your toilet every day to keep it smelling amazing it only takes two minutes and that's what i'm doing here in your house and your toilet will never stink again so after all that cleaning and getting rid of bad smelling things ah uh, it's time to bake banana bread yes i know we've done this before we seem to have an overabundance of overripe bananas and i'm telling you guys this is just a small portion of them i have <laughs> so many of them frozen in our in our freezer now you know instead of getting rid of them you might as well just bake a cake and enjoy them now this one we didn't buy them until they became overripe they got smooshed on the way from the market so when life gives you lemon you make banana bread so let's do this Thank you. 
guys uh we have a clean house and uh full tummies i mean it's a win-win situation i hope you have found something helpful for you and your home in this video let me know which one of these you feel is a neglected area in your house or an area that you think we have missed out check out those 21 fly lady baby steps you guys because my friend if you want your house to be in order you need a fly lady system and i will see you over there thank you for hanging out you are the best bye